But I don't think I'm as clear about pro no private thoughts. And I was wondering if you could expand upon that idea. Actually, there's a part in the early part of the Course in Miracles workbook that, where Jesus says, uh, you have no private thoughts, and yet that is all that you are aware of. Uh, so private thoughts are really like judgments. And he's saying, in truth, as the Christ, you have no private thoughts. All your thoughts are thoughts that you share with God. Because God created you with these beautiful Christ thoughts, we'll say. Christ is a Christ idea, and you share all your thinking with God in heaven. So in truth, you have no private thoughts. And yet, he says, and yet that is all you are aware of. So the Course in Miracles workbook is really an opportunity to bring these private thoughts into awareness from the unconscious mind, bring them up, and learn to expose them. Really, you can practice with your brothers and sisters, but really you're exposing them to the Holy Spirit. You're like saying, here, take this from me. Take this from my holy mind. You know, this, this thought is, does not belong in my holy mind. The judgments, the grievances, all the thoughts in the end even our, our preferences, you know, those are part of the human condition, but as we open up to the purity, purity of heart, we're really learning to give away everything that is not of God back to the Holy Spirit so that it's purged, it's purified, and our mind becomes pristine and whole. And you know how it is in relationships. There's things that you feel like you can share, things that you can't share. Sometimes when you have negative emotions, you know, the ego is really swirling in there and, and you kind of stuff it in, you stuff it down, you try to put on a happy face, you try to pretend to be spiritual, pretend to be nice, bite your tongue, <laughs> try the best that you can not to lash out at anybody and, and keep a very peaceful facade. Well, those, those emotions and those thoughts, you know, have to be dealt with in some way. And what we've been practicing is having a safe container, having a safe, accepting, loving community where those thoughts can be brought up, those emotions can be brought up, and they're not just immediately stuffed down and, and denied and repressed. So, part of this idea of no people pleasing, no private thoughts is is it's really designed to welcome thoughts from the unconscious mind up into awareness where you can get in touch with them and then you can release them. You can't really release something that you're not even aware of or you're not in touch with. So for us, we find it very important to do that. And there's also ways of doing it where, you know, we, we like to have it very much an experience where uh, there's, there's not a lot of interruptions, cross-talking, correcting, advice-giving, psychotherapy, all kinds of things that come in when the thoughts and emotions are coming up because that just cuts off the whole process. You want them to come up because you want to get in touch with them. And somebody's like, listen, this is what you need to do. As, as you can just, if just use your first 10 seconds of letting the emotions up, you've got tears starting to come. It's like, listen, this is what you have to do. Don't, don't, don't worry, honey. And I'll tell you what you should do. You know, we, we have developed a process called the clarity process, which actually helps facilitate the allowance of these emotions and these thoughts coming up in a helpful way. And we have people who practice just be holding the presence of love, of the presence of non-judgment when these things are coming up. So there's not an attempt to short-circuit the process. And it takes a lot of practice, but actually it works very, very well, and it's been very, very successful. Uh, we find people go through the healing process very quickly. Yeah, actually the most authentic, when we reach the state of most authenticity, with most authentic is we are the Christ. We're not everything else, but before we realize that, before that become our experience, we actually do believe we are anything but. We're selfish, we have our ego motives, you know, we have our self-interest. This is all the things that we believe. And as long as we hide them, we'll never, they are so real to us, 
because we give them power. We give them power by hiding them. And by hiding them, we choose not to look at them, but actually unconsciously we choose to believe them and let them scare us, really. So the whole thing about sharing private thoughts is an actual experience that we will speak up everything we believe about ourselves and especially those things that you notice you feel embarrassed or don't want to share with other people but still believe about yourself and those are the things that by you know in our community by sharing with a brother in a safe container that is a symbol that we want to open our mind up allow this to come up and to really to give them permission to be brought up to the Holy Spirit in our mind. And as long as they're brought up in a way that's not, you know, we don't judge them and suppress them, they will vanish, actually, in the presence of light. So it's very important to be in a, you know, to, to do this with a safe container at the beginning because we are so frightened to, originally we already believe we, we are those thoughts, we are what the thoughts are telling us, so it's very scary for us to expose that to other people. We're afraid of judgment, we're afraid of you know, being believed that it's true. So any kind of um, environment that is safe for us to want to open up initially is extremely, extremely helpful. So in our community, we, you know, we encourage people to share, but also as David mentioned, this clarity, clarity process is just so that you know, for the people who are sharing, you can be sure that nobody will interrupt and nobody will hold you to your stories. Nobody will the next day come back to you. You remember what you said? It's actually pretty bad. You know, nobody will come back to, to hold you onto it or remind you about that. And nobody will join you in the at the level of the story, try to fix you there or try to give your opinions or even relate to you at that level. And so the, all the listeners actually are practicing in their mind about holding someone, seeing someone from, you know, as the Christ, practicing true empathy in their, in their mind while they're listening to a story. Because we're never upset for the reason we think. So we never really join with a brother when they're upset and they believe they're upset because of the story. We don't want to join them in our mind. We want to join the truth so that we hold a high note for them. They can join us at the level of truth. So. Yeah, and it's over the years, you know, I felt that that's really what healing is. It's just this non-judgmental presence. And as I went deeper and I really exposed the self-concept, the idol image that I believed I was, and I was able to release that to the Holy Spirit, Jesus, then I experienced myself as this presence. And then people started to feel it with me. It was a feeling thing where, where people, like I have a global mailing list, and people would write in their questions, and they would pour their hearts out. I would get these long emails. It would be just pages and pages long where people were pouring out in great detail their issues, their struggles, their secrets, because they felt that they could do that with me, that I would be a non-judgmental presence. They could expose it all, and they knew I, they wouldn't get uh, a nasty letter back, a nasty email back, or a sharp, harsh correction, um, that, that they would just be allowed to expose what they had to expose. And oftentimes I found, when people would write these long emails, that they would write, 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 and then they would start writing, I think I'm answering my own question. Isn't that great that we all have the answers already inside of us? We all have the spirit in there already. But if we judge ourselves, if we are self-critical, if we feel unworthy, even to expose our darkness to a, to a dear friend, a dear brother, a dear sister, then we, we lock ourselves away from the light that's already inside of us. So I would just be reading the whole thing, and then I would say, I think I'm answering my own question, and then I would read all this beautiful spiritual stuff at the end of the email. This is what I'm realizing. Oh, and this, and I realized this, 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 and I'm so happy. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, oh, 
it, I don't know if you read all this, but um, it sure was good for me, uh, and so on and so forth. And I thought, how beautiful that people can feel such a sense of safety to do that. Then when the world travel started, that's a lot of what happened. There would be teachings coming from the Holy Spirit, but it was more my lightness, my happiness, my levity, the humor of the Holy Spirit, the joy. All of that stuff was coming through. I, I would go through, I would break out singing songs and uh, do more and more experiential exercises and all kinds of fun stuff. I was just having fun going where I was, I was invited, sharing whatever I was sharing. And really it was the non-judgmental presence that's what the healing is. And so we really have encouraged that in our communities because we know that the spiritual journey is very deep and there is a lot of darkness to come up, and we want to help facilitate what the Course says, going through the darkness to the light. You know, not just kind of trying to affirm your way back to heaven, or um, some of you might have seen that movie, uh, What the Bleep Do We Know? Michael Ludwig, the, the Irish theologian at the end, said, we, it's like, affirmations are like a, a putting, a, it's like a little smear over, over something that's very dark. It's, you, you have to get in touch with the darkness in order to be consistently happy. And I seem to go through 20-some years of it, but actually Francis and a lot of the people that I'm working with now, they go through it much faster, in, in a much more condensed time. And that's beautiful too, that's, that's a miracle, it's a time saver. Why should it take two decades, or three or four or five decades of, of inner work when we can learn from the miracles that are happening, and, and things can be quickened. We can have a celestial speed up and get through this darkness even faster and faster and faster. The you know, spirit is the only healer, and we all have the truth inside of us. We really don't need anything. We just need to let this darkness that's not the truth to come out to be shined by the light.